Drift away from time, slip into trips, and then we could collide. Like the moon to your tide, I'll make you high. As we rise above reality, I can feel your energy enter me naturally. We reach intoxication, and we don't have to sing much. Your vibes is it all, then my world's full. And we reach the next level. Oh, making us, we possess power within our skin. Cause I feel what you feel deep within on my skin. When I focus on your heartbeat, I can feel the start we become one. Our hearts sink to the same drum. One song, we run off like the rain. Wash away the pain, drench our flames in the same pain. Uh. Let's clear our clouded minds, drift away from time, slip into trips, and then we could collide. Like the moon to your tide, I'll make you hide. identify them by the red on their name tag, as well as our wonderful YVO facilitators who we will introduce as well. This is really about their voice and your voices joining together and forging intergenerational alliances. This is a different kind of event than generally happens with elected officials and civic influencers. It's not about, it's not about talking, it's really about listening and, and coming up with sort of shared views and values for how to move our city forward. Um, I will come back at the end to, to give you a little bit of prep about going into the discussions, but first we're going to introduce Divine to tell you a little bit about why vote, this youth town hall, what brings us here, followed by Catrice telling us about some of the norms for the night, which we really ask you to adhere to. Uh, there's also copies on your tables, and then Kishan will share some of our um, aspirational outcomes for the evening. Our time is going to move very quickly. We really see this as the beginning of an ongoing set of conversations, so we're excited to do that together. Divine. Oh, and I also would like to welcome you to Civic Hall, this beautiful space that you're in. And if you're wondering what, yes, Civic Hall, give it up for Civic Hall. Uh, this is a collaborative learning space for people who work at the intersection of technology, civic engagement, and social good, three things that I think we can all agree are best blended together and are sorely in need. Uh, I don't think I introduced myself. I'm Sandy Balaban. I'm one of the co-founders of, of YVO, and I'm fortunate to be an organizer in residence at this great space. If you want to learn more about Civic Hall, uh, you can find me or Jerry Weinstein, who is our ambassador and house manager tonight. Uh, and he's on the keyboards tonight, as we like to say. <laughs> um, and then also Justin Cohen are, is our official photographer, so if you, if you see him, smile, so you can look particularly lovely. Um, divine. Hi, everybody. Oh, okay. Um, my name is Divine Adumbo. I am a Cameroonian, Congolese young black woman raised in Harlem and a dedicated member of Y Boat. I want to thank you all for being here today. 
It is not very often that young people, their representatives, and the civic change makers in their communities get the opportunity to be in one space engaging in transformative conversation. So not only is this evening an honor to myself and all of the YVO community, but this is a very special event for all of us. So I would like all of you guys to give yourselves a round of applause for making it here today. Um, this room is full of leaders innovators and groundbreakers. And I don't just mean the assembly members, council members, and congressmen and women who are here today. We have activists, artists, and students who value the power and importance of civic engagement. This evening, among many things, is about representation. And so it is not surprising that the leadership in this room represents itself in so many different forms. This town hall is about bridging the gap that contributes to the lack of true representation for young people and the issues they care about. It is about partnerships, and it is about sustaining the political action among 18-year-olds. This is what Why Vote stands for, and this is what we strive to accomplish in our work, which is so often centered and modeled by the young people who are involved. This town hall is an example of that work. Trust me, it took a lot of work to get this all set up. Um, at Y Vote, we are not just about, we don't, we're not just brought together by the pizza, um, but by the politics of our lives, the grievances of our communities, and the aspirations and goals we have for one another, our representatives, the coming midterms, and most especially our country. Our goal is to register one million young people by the end of 2018, and yes, um, and with the help of Modi Vote, who I'm assuming is also here today, yes, Modi Vote, um, which bridges an essential gap between the attention to vote and the action of voting, we are already on our way to that goal. Why Vote started off with over 50 students from more than 20 different schools across New York City last summer, and today you will get to speak with some of those founding students, as well as some of the founders of Why Vote and its valued facilitators. Anne Weiner, who this town hall is dedicated to, was one of the integral members of the founding team. In 1990, Anne founded Crossroads School in my neighborhood of Harlem, and had since been a longtime educational leader and mentor. Two weeks ago, Anne passed away of cancer, and we would like to take this moment to also reflect on her and her legacy. Lastly, the success of this evening is dependent on the following forward thinking. This town hall is not just about voting. It is about the people behind the legislation and the arm we extend to one another to help move our common goals forward and to elevate our communities. It is not just about the elections, but a generation of civically engaged young people and the continuation of intergenerational conversations. And I'm absolutely sure we can all accomplish that today. Thank you very much. It is my job to let you guys know the norms of the night. All right, so the first norm that we're gonna have is one mic. Um, I'm sure some of you who are in Y Vote has, have heard of this norm a lot. Um, so basically, we're just gonna make sure that one person is speaking at a time, just so that we can make sh sure that everyone is listening. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Um, next, the next norm is focus on the we and not the me. So we're here because we are building a goal in collaboration with each other. So we want to make sure that we have an open dialogue and not a monologue. Yeah? All right, next. So listen to learn and be open-minded. Um, so you guys are seated in tables with people who you may not know and who may share different views from you. And um, it is your job today to really, instead of um, hearing something that you disagree with and immediately rejecting it, really sit and listen and learn. Um, next. Okay, 
Sorry, I made up some of these. And so the wording is a little funny. Um, okay, so the next one is be an activist, but be a person. Woo! <laughs> um, basically, uh, it's really important that you know that yes, we are all here, um, we are all activists, we are all fighting for a cause, but underneath all of that fighting, we remain to be human beings. And so it's important to remember that, un that experiences are not universal, and point of views are not universal, and it is our job to connect not only as activists, but as people as well. So underneath that is don't be a rock, be clay. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, um, next, speak with passion and authenticity. In this space, we invite you to speak your truth. So make sure that whatever truth you give, whatever point of view you have, is truly and authentically yours. Next, respect everyone's opinions. So I feel like I touched on this, so just a little bit of, repeti of uh, repetition because this one's important. So that one's also self-explanatory. Okay, so see those with different perspectives as the loyal opposition and not the enemy. Um, too often, we hear points of views that we disagree with and we automatically think, oh, this person has a different point of view than mine, so they must be the enemy. I am against them. But that is not the point of this conversation. Our conversation here, our goal here is to have a conversation in which we can each express our points and then come to a common understanding. Um, next, respect the timekeepers. So we're in a space and we have a lot to say, but we do have a limited amount of time that you can be sat at your table. So make sure that when the timekeeper, whoever the timekeeper is at your table, when their alarm goes off, you quickly finish up your last sentence and wrap it up. Yeah? <clears throat> next, step up, step back. Um, this one's important because I find myself doing this a lot. So if you notice that you're the one at the table with all of the answers and you're answering all the questions and you feel great, that's amazing and you should be proud of yourself. But also, <laughs> we're here to have, once again, a collaborative conversation. So you want to really make sure that if you're the one who's always stepping up, maybe consider taking a step back and letting someone else speak. Or if you notice someone at your table who's not speaking, you can say, hey, I would really love to hear your point of view on this. So then you can kill it, but also learn at the same time. Um, next, avoid generalizations. So we're all human, we all have biases, and whether those are implicit or ones that we are aware of. And um, basically, we just want to avoid make just, okay, sorry. <laughs> All right, so we just want to avoid generalizations. Moving on. Um, no jargon, uncontextualized acronyms, or insider-outsider language. So once again, we are all different, and we all have different levels of education, and we must take this into account, especially when we're in a space that is meant to be as productive and conducive as this one. So you really wanna make sure that you're using language that everyone at your table can understand because too many times in politics, people feel like they're just nodding their heads and agreeing with the majority op opinion without actually knowing what it is. Yes, there it is. <laughs> um, next. So um, one thing we're gonna ask of you is to develop clear next steps. So um, at your table, that should be your main goal, to develop clear next steps. So, yeah. And um, before I sit back down, is there anything else that I missed that anybody would like to propose? Have fun. <coughs> yes, <Yeah>. have fun. <laughs> yes. yes, yes. So um, at your tables, you should make an effort to um, have introductions, like a round table introduction, and um, introduce yourself. So, for example, my name's Catrice, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm really excited. So, thank you.
Um, next is Keyshawn. Uh, Keyshawn. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> How are you guys doing? My name is Keyshawn Rubin. I attend Transit Tech CTE High School. We'll go over that when you guys see me, whatever. Um, for the outcomes and feelings tonight, I want to keep it short and sweet. Um, just think of the future. Like, what really comes, what is the outcome? What are you really here for? What are you really here to discuss with the people around here? You know, like, a lot of people have passed away this year, especially for me in my situation. And like, I want to carry out that legacy of like getting the point across of what we want to do for our future and what we all try to do throughout our daily lives, okay? And that's pretty much it. Have fun, guys. to join it. And the discussion facilitators will kick you off. Just a reminder to, to adhere to the timelines. Uh, and you will have, we're going to go for 15 minutes, then you'll have a break to mingle freely, and then you'll go to the second number on your name tag. We'll go over that when the time comes. Any questions? Let the conversations flow. <laughs> Oh, 